I will never forget my most uncomfortable night's sleep in the outdoors. I was 12 years old and on a Boy Scout trip to hike the Grand Canyon. Since it was summer in the desert, I didn't feel like carrying a heavy sleeping bag on our 16.5 mile hike to the bottom of the canyon and back up the next day. I opted to bring just a sleeping pad with me. Once nighttime temperatures dropped into the 30s on the south rim of the canyon, I spent a miserable night shivering, wrapped in that thin foam mattress like a burrito. It was a very long and sleepless night. I'm sure some of you can tell a similar story of how you thought you had selected the right sleeping bag, but spent a long, cold, and sleepless night. Let's look at some of the information you need to choose the right bag for a good night's sleep. The question to ask is what is the temperature where you will be using the bag? The temperature ratings on sleeping bags are not comfort ratings. These are survival ratings. It's the minimum temperature that the bag will keep you alive. If you use a zero degree bag at zero degrees, you'll be cold and miserable all night long, but it will keep you alive. Find out what the average nighttime temperature for the location you'll be using your bag is. Understand that at higher elevations, temperatures can drop drastically at night, even during the summer months. Don't think that just because it's summer, it will be a warm night's sleep. At lower elevations, the daytime and nighttime temps may not be that drastically different unless you get wet from rain, mist, or morning dew. In those cases, a bag with some sort of waterproof shell or even a hydrophobic treatment on the fill may be a good choice. Next, ask yourself what activity you need the bag for. Are you car camping or do you plan to pack your bag for a long distance? This will help you choose a bag balancing the factors of comfort, weight, volume, and price. As I mentioned, the ratings on the bag are a survival temperature and not a comfort rating. So if you're going to sleep in zero degree weather, you may wish to purchase a negative 30 degree bag so that it will keep you comfortable. Women tend to sleep colder than men do, so the ladies may wish to opt for a warmer bag. And keep in mind that it's always easier to make a bag cooler than it is to make it warmer. Another issue is the shape of the bag. A mummy style bag will be much warmer than a standard rectangular bag that lets you sleep with shoulders out. A rectangular bag is going to provide more room if you're a restless sleeper, but the open top will let in more cold air. Matching the shape of the bag to your style of sleep and the weather is very important when looking for a comfortable night's sleep. There are some things you can do to increase the warmth of a bag, and we'll talk about those tips in a little bit. Some features that you may want to look for to make your bag more comfortable are heavier zippers that make opening and closing the bag easier a taller foot box so your feet can point in any direction you want and are not forced to point at the sky all night long, and full-length zipper baffles to block drafts from coming in at the zipper. If you have to carry your bag any distance, you will not only want it to be comfortable, but to be as light as possible. I like to keep a backpacking sleeping bag under two pounds, but this will mean that it is made from a less durable material and has less insulation. Something light will have a very thin shell that is more prone to damage from sharp rocks and sticks. Heavier bags are likely to be made from a cotton canvas or thicker nylon shell. They'll also have a denser insulation. Finding a bag that is both lightweight, warm, and affordable can be a challenge. There are bags that weigh less and keep you toasty, but those bags tend to be much more expensive. More expensive bags also have more loft. Loft is how much you can compress a bag and have it return to its full shape and warmth. If the insulation is compacted, it provides less warmth. A bag with more loft will take up less space in your pack, but also return to its full insulation factor when unrolled. These bags can be filled with down, a natural feather material, or with some sort of synthetic fiber insulation. The higher amount of loft a bag has, the more warmth it will provide while still only taking up minimum space when packed. Synthetic fiber insulations are less expensive and also repel water better than down, but there are some excellent waterproof down bags on the market. Unless you are backpacking your bag for a good distance, the amount of loft it has isn't really a concern. Also, most bags come in an outer bag that is great for retail, but takes up a lot of room in a pack. I suggest if volume is an issue that you replace the storage bag that comes with your sleeping bag with a compression sack. These allow you to use cinch straps to maximize how compact you can get your sleeping bag when you put it away. Like any piece of outdoor gear, you can find excellent products at a reasonable price, and you can find products for a very high price that don't perform the way you need them to. Just because a bag is more expensive doesn't mean that it is ideally suited to your needs. Focus on features rather than name brand or price so that you get a bag that is ideal for your needs. Additionally, some bags come in different sizes. You can get an XL bag for those above six feet tall, 
a regular for those up to six feet tall, some with wider shoulders, women's size bags that tend to run smaller and have more room in the hips rather than in the shoulders, and youth bags sized for preteen children. They also offer double bags for couples who want to share a single bag. There are a few tips to help you be more comfortable in your sleeping bag. One is to use a sleeping pad to create a softer bed under your bag and also create a thermal break between your body and the bag. The insulation under your bag gets compressed and the cold ground can steal warmth during the night. A good pad will help reflect your body heat back towards you and create an insulation layer of air. A sleeping bag liner or a bivy can offer an added layer of warmth inside the bag or outside and is easily removable to extend the comfort level of your bags across more seasons of use. Likewise, a quilt or blanket can be used on top of or underneath the bag to help keep more of the cold out. A camping pillow can help insulate your neck and head as well as keep you from sleeping with your ear pressed into a sharp rock. For really cold weather, I like to sleep with a hoodie because it covers the top of my head and the back of my neck, two sources of major heat loss. A beanie will do if you don't have a hoodie. Either way, sleeping in your clothing and using multiple layers means that it's easy to adjust the temperature during the night. And finally, if you find yourself getting too cold, boiling some water and filling an algae bottle with the hot water, placing that water wrapped in a towel between your legs will radiate heat all night long. And when you wake up, you'll have a jar of water already purified and ready for drinking. Look at the labels on the bags you're interested in and make sure that you cover the four criteria of comfort, weight, volume, and cost so that you get the right bag for your next outdoor adventure. Your Sportsman's Warehouse Camping Associate can help you get a bag that will be a perfect companion. Sleep tight.